Hello, and welcome back to what's bubbling is in... I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at the new features of Zim version Zim00. So, we'll go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we want to go to the mini site, and you can do that through the news or the examples in the collections. We'll do it through the top here where we can pull up a puzzle and we don't have to wait if we don't want to. So clicking, we've seen the puzzle a couple times. You can play that puzzle. It's interactive. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I've now done it, oh, hundreds of times. I, I love the puzzle. So beautiful. So uh, you should try that. We've already seen this one on PIC, VID, ODD, and SVG. So have a look at how we've uh, wrapped our traditional asset system with these new classes. That's in another bubbling. So we'll go up here and press on the next one. Keying out. May as well take a look at this code. So this is one where we've keyed out a label based on the color. So this is a label inside of a rectangle. And based on the color, uh, we, we turn this whole thing into a bitmap uh, by just passing this container into a bitmap. And then the bitmap has a key out. So we'll look at that code. But let's go to the next one. You can see how it's cut out right through to see the background through there. This one is also uh, featuring keying out and it's a bit more apparent what we're doing, but it um, has a color picker. So check this out. Whoop. This is the new Zim color picker right here. It's color picker still, but it is a spectrum and we've made that the default because it's pretty nice, isn't it? Uh, there's also, you click this thing right here and it turns into sort of more like pixel version of that. You can collapse it open it. That's all built into the color picker. You can also type in a color as well. So uh, 00, zero uh, C is blue. Um, zero, zero, C, C, zero, 00 is green. So um, there's the color or you can use the dropper and pick a color. So if I pick this one, boop, it just keyed out the background color. So the green, the green that I picked before in the tolerance wasn't close enough. So if we pick the wrong green, like say, how about this one right here? That's too bright. But if I increase my tolerance, there we go. Ah, okay. And the sort of the traditional sense there. So you can pick any color like that and key out the, the dark colors and increase the tolerance on that. And that's your keying effect. All right, so that's what we're, we're looking at um, is the code to be able to do this stuff. Let's uh, go in and have a look. F11 here, we'll reduce this down. Pop her on over here. And we're still in the old code. Uh, how about that? Okay, so you get to explore with me a little bit down to my Zim folder where all these things are. And we will take a look at the keying out one first. So these are all the, the modules left over from the last bubbling. I'll just remove those if you don't mind. Boop and boop. Okay, so you're right now. We're importing Zim right here, and we also want Pizzazz to be able to make the pattern. So we imported the make pattern function. Oh, that's how we did it. In the last bubbling with the ES6, I, we imported Pizzazz. So that's a little bit different. We imported Pizzazz, and then we used Pizzazz.make pattern. But here we've uh, imported the function itself and from Pizzazz. All right, and we're bringing in our interface, but that's the little arrow up the top. You don't need to worry about that. We have a font because we're using the font in our label called Ruben. Here's us making those pattern slants in the background. We've made a rectangle right here. We make a label with the words key out on it. A bigger, a big size of the font Ruben and the color is green. So that's a Zim green color to the label and we center reg it. Uh, before we do this, here's what it looks like. So we do that, and we come to here and open a browser plus. Hmm, I don't see any label. So what's missing? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> right. 
we didn't even add this, but if we add it, let's see, we're centering that on the rectangle, dot center this, then we'll see it. There we go. Okay, um, there's our label on a rectangle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass this whole, uh, the, the label is centered inside the rectangle. Just remember, um, Zim shapes are actually containers. If we wanted to, we can put things in them. If we want to interact with those things in the containers, then we want to turn the mouse children true on the container. Then we can interact with things inside. But that might include the actual shape that's inside the Zim container for <laughs> the rectangle. <laughs> Please ignore what I just said. Anyway, uh, there's the label centered on the rectangle itself. And we've moved it down a bit because the uh, there's no descenders so it just looked a bit off center so no need to worry about that well we didn't even have to add this because what we're going to do is take this rectangle and pass it right into a bitmap so there we are passing any any zim uh, display object we can pass into a bitmap and the bitmap will then like cache all that stuff into a bitmap that's amazing. That used to be really hard. Well, not that hard. You'd have to use cache canvases. It was like twisty and mentally difficult. I know because I had to prepare all that stuff in the background of the bitmap and do it again as I was doing all this key out stuff. And yeah, it's always mentally difficult to do. Well, this is not mentally difficult. Pass the rectangle into a bitmap. Yay. <laughs> and key out the green color. Green, green. Cool, huh? and then center what the resulting bitmap and drag it. If, if you pass this into the bitmap, you'll get both this and that. And then you'd see something like this, I think, anyway. Looks the same, doesn't it? But look, we're dragging that, watch what happens. One's the keyed out, and the, this is the original. <laughs> so, um, in other words, just don't add the original. So if you don't add it, then it becomes this, just the bitmap that is the copy of that. Okay, and there it is keyed out. I don't know if you noticed when it was on the dark, there's a little bit of green kind of around the edges, a touch of it, and you can play with that a, a bit as well with the key out um, next parameter. So if you go 0.5 or something, then you get, I don't know if we can tell, you see how it's crumbly? Like it's like keyed out into the gray and it's a bit bit like uh, ragged around the edges there. So you don't want to key out that much. Um, we'll see some more of that when we look at the color picker. But let's just leave that the default, which is like 0.1. So that's that's not the threshold, what do we call that? The sensitivity, not the sensitivity either. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Something like that. We're going to see it in the next one. All right, there we are making the interface. So a nice simple example very handy to be able to key out a uh, color on a bitmap. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is called chroma key, I think, if I recall. There it is right there. So here's chroma key and open in browser plus. Um, remember this one? This one you open up, we get the color picker. When we pick, so this is a color picker that's going to end up knowing what color that is. When I press it, We've found out what the color it is, and there it is, and it's just keyed out that color. So very similar to the last thing, except we've got some, some controls kind of put in here. You could have done that for the video. This could have been the video playing as well uh, back here, but then um, we could have keyed out dynamically the, the video. So there we are importing, similar to before. We've got our slants. We've got our button. The button is bringing up, uh, it's hiding and stuff. I, I've made things visible rather than adding and remove from, I don't know which, it doesn't really matter which one we use, but we're adding, we're hiding a bunch of things when we click that button and we're showing a bunch of things. Uh, you need to see that. So the button and this text we hide, gone and the tolerance and the color picker we show. So the tolerance isn't part of the color picker, the color picker is more of a generic thing. So where is that color picker? Hmm. Chroma keying. 
instructions tolerance slider tolerance viz uh, oh that's just the words there oh, the color picker we must be popping up some other way picker dot show okay so here it is where where do we make the picker here's the picker right here so there's our picker uh, we turn the alpha picker off otherwise it looks like this it's got an alpha picker on it like so but we didn't need it for the for the example we've also turned the spectrum okay off and that looks like this remember the okay button that used to be in there that allows us to pick a color and play around with it and then when we're okay hit okay and that assign whatever color we want so that's sort of the traditional uh, look to it but for a picker we didn't really need the okay because we're going to activate the color right away we don't need an okay so we turn the spectrum okay to false You've got some other things here as well. You can turn various buttons off. You can change the modes and things like that. So Spectrum is a new mode. Uh, oh, no, the mode button is this button right here. So that's our mode button that toggles between the pixels. Sometimes when you've got colors, a Spectrum is too much. You're sort of saying, okay, green, but I wanted that green that I had before. What, what, which green was it? It was one, one of these greens in here. <laughs> I know in, in VR, I, we change the color of our clothing and skin and stuff with a spectrum. And it's just like, nice to have a spectrum, but if you want to go back to something else, it's it's a little bit harder. So what we did is we used ZimPixel. So in behind the scene, we've got a new class called Pixel, which pixelates something. We just pixelated this. It's actually pretty cool. We could have put a slider in here and allowed you to have little puny pixels really big pixels just with this slider but we decided to go with a medium size i thought i'm a bit more proficient just to, ah there's what you get that's enough of them that's enough colors Be between these two colors you can you can find something <laughs> all right anyway and, and allow us to get back to colors that we picked before you sort of look at them and remember go oh, i think it was the third the third red in bop there it is have you ever done that before Alpha, by the way, is kind of neat. That sh this is unique to Zim. There's full alpha. If we go like that, it might be confusing. What am I looking at? What we're looking at is the al this alpha, 0.65, against white. This alpha, 0.65, against black. And in the middle, against a middle gray. So that sort of allows you to visualize what the alpha is. Hopefully that doesn't confuse people too much. <laughs> Probably does. I bet you you're sitting there going, oh, that's what that is. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, one thing we're wrestling with a little bit, I can't remember what our solution or in the end was. I think if we get rid of the button bar, we do offer an X up in the top. But if we bring in the button bar, <laughs> it wasn't going to be much of a button bar anymore if it didn't have the clothes. You know, it's just this big button bar with only this stuff on the left, and we're kind of going, well, whatever. But there might be a collapsed version of all this, and it's not a collapse that's collapsing. Um, a smaller version where there's no button bar that just shows it up at the top. You want to see if we can dig for that? So that's called button bar false, at which point we probably don't need to do this thing. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. There's there's the close up there. So this is a very sort of thin version of your color picker, which almost works. We, I, I don't know what color I picked though. See what I mean? This this one is more like I click it and then this whole thing closes and my color shows up somewhere else. Or as I click, color shows up somewhere else. I can guess that that was a green and probably adjust the tolerance uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I got more of a yellow tolerance that went out. Um, anyway, that's what it looks like without having the, the color swatch in there. And then you've got a thin collapse, you've got your spectrum, and you've got your clothes. All right, um, good. Let me just undo that, though. I think that's roughly it. Let's see what else we got in here. So what are we doing when we set the color? First of all, we told it the dropper target is the pick. So our new picker, if you want, otherwise it'll be the stage. So I think this works. Let's try it. Bring up the color picker. 
No, maybe we have to put in stage. Let's try stage. Like that. So maybe there's no dropper other than... I uh, should have shown you. If, if we don't put any dropper, then the dropper is just on, on this part. But no... Oh yeah, it is dropping on the stage. The only thing is, sometimes there's nothing on the stage. Is that why? No, because it's doing the picture. What the heck is it doing now? Dropper target stage. I'm not sure. Why isn't it picking this as a dropper color? It had in the past. We'll have to look into that. It might be a small bug. Or did I set the dropper target somewhere else as well? Anyway, the idea behind that, and we had it working like that um, for most of the time we were building this, as a matter of fact, is we had basically the whole stage was a dropper and we could press on anywhere. Then we realized we might want to specifically pull a dropper from a certain object. And here we are <laughs> pulling a dropper from a certain object, yet it should really be pulling it from everywhere. So nah, I wonder, I wonder if when we made it, the stage didn't have these things on it. Because that's what it does. It just takes, it takes a snapshot of the stage. Oh no, because the, these, um, these things are on the stage. So it would have, should have color picked or pickered. <laughs> should have darn, darn, dare color pickered on, on those slants. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll look into that. Maybe it's a small <clears throat> glitch in the system. But that's your dropper target. That should work. And what did we have it as? Pick, I think. It was this pick. There might be some other reason for it not working, but I can't think of it at the moment. Picker dot on close. We are hiding things and showing others. Picker when the picker changes. This is what we're doing. We're doing key pick. So we're getting rid of this green picture. We're bringing in the original asset and cloning it. I wonder if we could have done that with... This was made before we had our assets all made. So we should probably look into adjusting it. Maybe that could be a new pick in there. Then we wouldn't have to bother cloning it. Uh, should we try it? New pick. Like that. No clone. Let's have a look. Refresh here. We dropper. <laughs> it didn't work. Something something in the way we did it. Uh, new pick. Did it give an error? Pick dot key out is not a function. Oh. Uh, key out. That's not yet a bitmap. Oh, right. Okay. So pick is a container dot bitmap. So this is the actual bitmap inside the container. So picks are container where assets were referenced to the bitmap. Interesting. Okay, and we bring up the color picker and pick. And here we go. All right, so mm, ah, about as complicated as the other way. <laughs> Have a laugh about it. Why not, huh? So we're positioning it in the right place. We're basically re-adding that picture, and then we're keying out the selected color, whatever the color picker had selected, based on the slider's current value here. And this is a little function that even if we change the slider here, we're calling the key pick. We didn't do that before. We just had it so you'd set this, and then you'd pick a color. And uh, Carl, Carl um, said, well, I'm trying to make dynamic in his way. He's almost always right. Uh, he's, he's almost always right. He's almost always wrong. Somehow, he manages to be both at the same time. <laughs> anyway, thanks for, for all your help there. Um, like, right now, he's probably timing all of this stuff to get to our section. So, a, a big help to the Zim community, and thank you um, for that. Uh, uh, definitely had something good here. We This is really nice to be able to dynamically change this rather than just set it and try a color and say, did it key out? Nope. Uh, so nice, huh? Um, tolerance is just a parameter that gets passed into the keying. So where is the keying? There it is. There's the key out, right? And there's the 
the parameter that gets passed in. Oh, was it tolerance? Is that yeah, tolerance. Right, there we go. Tolerance. It says it right here. Tolerance is the name of that thing. Not threshold, not sensitivity, but the tolerance, of course. <laughs> Any of those things would have done, I'm sure. But we uh, took a look at um, the sort of common words used for that, like on the internet, tolerance seems to be the, the when keying out something, that's what they tend to use is the tolerance. So we use that too. We like to be unique at Zim, but not all the time. Consistency is also a design principle. Remember, that's how it goes. Consistency, definitely a, a design principle. But recall people, and this is where we're more at, Variety is the spice of life, okay, variety. So be consistent within an app, yes, and within a framework, yes, but uh, variety is the spice of life. So between apps, you make them as different as you want, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and same with interfaces. It's nice to be use usable, you know, to be a, a consistent, but in my mind, experimental interfaces and doing things unique way, embedded interfaces that relate to the content is more important than uh, usability. <laughs> there, I said it, and I teach it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so be it. Obviously, it depends on, on the context, of course. Like, if you're working for a bank, maybe you want to be consistent. If you're, if you're um, making more expressive works, though, go ahead and ha have a variety of different interfaces. Don't you worry about it. And that's what Zim excels at, letting you uh, pick your interfaces and make make them how you want and make them where you want, when you want. <laughs> all right, have we have we looked at it all? Is that roughly the end there? I think so. So remember, this is not an explore. An explore, we really go into the code and make code together. Uh, but uh, hopefully we've gone into it enough to have you know what's there now. And that is a bubbling. So this has been a What's Bubbling is in roll, and I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night, please. Hopefully <laughs> that's too schmoozy. Please come and join us. Uh, if you're still listening to this, it must mean that you have some interest in Zim. We would love to see you at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. Uh, come on in and say hi. Don't be shy. We try and say hello to everybody who comes in. We are we, the royal we, are a real person, <laughs> and uh, love to hear from you. Okay, take it easy.